just taken by Sterling Marlin was something out of turn number four. This car number eight breaking loose. Take a look here. Looked like Wally Dahlenbach got in the wall. Saw 71 Cup cars lifted. Boy, there goes up in the air. There's Sterling up in the air. Looked like they might have lifted because of that accident in front of him, and he got it backwards Indeed. there. Got it in the grass and kept it coming around from another angle. Take a look. Whoa. And that's that rear spoiler that Neil was showing us at the first of the race when it got absolutely backwards at that speed. It just lifted the back end off the ground. Talk about a flying machine. That's a 3,500 pound flying machine. A couple of years ago, without those side windows and all the things that's been done, these side skirts, that car would probably went on up and over. But NASCAR has really been working to get these cars when they have a problem to keep them on the ground. Look at it again in normal speed to the guy who finished second here in 91 to Ernie Irvin. Sterling Marlin and take a listen to this look at Joe Rutman yeah coming into the pits he said what in the world is going on yeah before that area we just saw him slide down on that pavement that used to be grass and when that grass was there the air would get on the cars turn over NASCAR paved that area and it really helped set that car back down Saw some very nasty accidents up there before. Lucky Sterling Marlin. Leaders all coming in. Let's take a look at the leaderboard as you watch feeding time for the elephants here on Pitt Road. Earnhardt, Irvin, Jarrett, Bodine, Hillen were the leaders at lap 129. Mike Joy has more on Pitt Road. Earnhardt's crew at work. They call them a flying aces, and you're about to see why. David Smith on Jack. Chocolate Myers tosses that empty gas can. Bobby Moody will lend. New crew chief Andy Petrie. Tire changing there. Left side's off. Car is all the way up in the air. Tires were off before it was. Hammer with those lug nuts. Down he goes. He's gone. So are the Bodine brothers. You know, we, we just saw earlier, Ken, Ricky Rudd's transmission or rear brake taking off. Everybody says, well, why do they do that? Why do they spin the wheels? These cars have got such big, tall, high-ratio gears, you just got to rev the motor up and just drop the clutch like a drag car, or you just can't get it rolling. Mike Joy. They're trying to find the misfiring problem on Alan Kowicki's car. Earl Parker, a champion, has brought them a tool to measure the electric flow through those wires and see if the plugs are all firing properly so they can find which one to change or at least which cylinder has the problem. If we got an opportunity to take another look at that Sterling Marlin incident, I think that Michael Waltrip was the one involved. I thought for a moment it might have been a Bill Parsons number 41, but it looked like Mike was in there with Dolan back on that incident up in turn number four. And we also noticed just a moment ago the Ernie Irvin crew was out here. They see, I know they were waving, give their guys some confidence, or if they were concerned about something as he came back on the track. The Ernie yeah. Irvin car. Here you see Davey Allison coming back out again as well. Let's take a look at this replay another time here. Well, we can see Joe Ruckman headed to the There's pits, and there is the Dollenbach car about to get... He did get into the wall, and, and I guess indeed. Sterling Marlin must have let off, and, and Michael, Michael Walker hit him in the rear, and that sent him in the spin and up in the oh. air. You're right, Ed Rutman had to say, what in the world? This guy's going by on the left backwards. Now, this is a break for Kyle Petty. He had just made that green flag pit stop, but he stayed in the lead lap. So now he's back on the same sequence as everyone else as far as his pit stops are concerned. Only thing is, he's back in the pack, but that car's awfully fast. I think he can come back up through there. Here's David Hobbs. Richard Petty, your son there had a bit of a lucky break with that accident. What do you think about his day so far? Well, he had a bad uh, break because he w shouldn't have been in that position. They had a little problem in, in the pit, had to make an extra pit stop. So, uh, you know, everything's looking good so far. And your car, Rick Wilson, you had to stop then all four tires to change. You didn't change the car at all, did you? Well, what happened uh, to begin with, the, the car got loose, but the main thing, we made a bad pit stop the first time that got him behind. He's been running as fast as leaders. He's just been about... 12 or 14 seconds behind, but hopefully we got him hooked up now. We'll find out right quick. You did this race for 32 years. This is the first time you haven't done it. I mean, how are you feeling about it? Do you feel a bit sad? Well, no, I tell you, as aggravating as these cars are and the way, way they got them with the restrictor plates, I'm glad I'm watching and not out there. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Richard. And back to Ken. Richard's car is running 23rd. There are 28 cars in the lead lap. And right now, let's try to talk to the man in fourth place, Jeff Bodine. Ken Squire, do you read us here, sir? 
Hi there, Ken. How you doing? How are you doing is the question. Well, I'm doing fine. How about everybody watching out there and across America, around the world? Isn't this a fun race? Are you having fun? I'm having a ball out here. How does this compare to that bobsledding you're involved in? Well, you know, and a bobsled is not scarier, I think. Of course, I've been in some pretty scary spots here today, so maybe it's about equal, but we're proud of the bobsled. Uh, the fellows are over there in Europe now testing and uh, getting ready for the Olympics next year. It's a wonderful thing that you're doing there, but let's talk for a moment about what you're doing here. That car has looked very stout. Do you think you have enough to carry it up front, Jeff? Well, we're up front. It's the problem is getting by these GM cars. Uh, as you have been watching, as soon as I get in front of them, they just seem to blow, blow right by me. Uh, don't really have enough to get up and go to stay on front, but you know we'll ride here, uh, do the best we can, hopefully be in a good position at the end to make a move. Jeff, uh, did you realize you're running side by side with your brother there? Yeah, I wanted him to get behind me to help me push me up, but uh, hey, we're racing out here, and you know we're trying to work with all the Ford cars and let those GM guys work together. That's worked pretty good sometimes, but uh, every once in a while, we don't get the right cooperation we want. Well, thanks for taking us hitchhikers along. Let's go over to Mike Joy for just a moment. Well, Ken, one year ago, Jeff walked along the starting grid of this race with me after watching Olympic bobsledding on CBS. He told me, he says, I want to go drive one of those things. had looked on television. We made it! <laughs> but Bodine felt he could help the U.S. team. He commissioned Chassis Dynamics in Oxford, Connecticut, who've built race cars for all three Bodine brothers to analyze current sleds and build a new U.S. prototype. Where Bob Cuneo and Bob V found many sleds to be similar, they copied existing designs. Where they found the sleds to differ, they innovated. And as in auto racing, they rented World Cup bobsled sites the day after a race there to test under actual competition conditions. I asked Jeff what moved him to become so deeply involved in somebody else's sport. Last time an American won a gold medal in the bobsledding was 1936 with an American-made bobsled. And that's the last time they had an American-made bobsled. So that's our goal, to build these bobsleds, provide them to the drivers, to the teams, and then go win some medals. Jeff has already put $135,000 of his own money into this project. They are looking for corporate sponsorship. And you'll see this in much greater detail if you tune in to CBS Winterfest coverage next Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. It's a great story. They really have helped that team along. They've come up with some new sleds. They get a tenth of a second. They're going to get themselves some medals. We're going to get green this time by and be racing once again here in the 500. And Jeff Bodine in car number 15 will be in fourth. Deployed in front, Earnhardt first, Dale Jarrett in second, Ernie Irvin in third. Now Kyle Petty will be back in 12th position on this restart. Here you see Kowicki's car. Let's take a look at uh, 1 through 15 for a moment here. Earnhardt, Jarrett, Irvin, Bodine, and Schrader. And in the second 10, you have Rusty Wallace. That car number two Pontiac beginning to roll up through. Rick Mass, Jeff Gordon, Brent Bodine, and Bobby Hillen. Mark Martin, Kyle Petty, Shepard, Hamilton, Musgrave. We can look a little further back here, too, Ned. Yeah, we still have 27 cars in the lead lap. All of these cars, drivers we're looking at here, are still in the lead lap. Contenders. Spencer's up there in 21st place. Michael Waltrip in 25th place. He's had a little bit of a problem, but still in the lead lap. And uh, there, Wally Dallenbach Jr. is in 27th place. He's the last car in the lead lap. Bill Parsons is one lap down in 28th position. See getting, how far back Davy Allison is, boy. Getting set on a restart here. Hensley, Marcus, those cars out of the race. Dick Trickle 